They have to be discouraged. <laughs> yes, KD looked good and amazingly good considering how long he's been out and what he was coming back from with a sprained knee. They had an opportunity to win this game in the final minute, had two possessions, could have taken the lead and ultimately fell short. But isn't that what Kevin Durant is supposed to be all about? He's supposed to be your closer. And at this point for the Nets, there are no moral victories because... <laughs> To paraphrase Rick Pitino, Kyrie Irving's not coming through that door. Or if he is, it's only a handful of games. Ben Simmons, we don't know when he's coming through that door. So it is the Kevin Durant show right now. And it just wasn't enough. And yes, the Miami Heat uh, are, are arguably the best team in the Eastern Conference, or certainly one of, and they played them toe-to-toe. -to -toe. But again, at this point, no moral victories, no you know nice effort, good try. They need to get wins. And now at 500 with the Boston Celtics just around the corner, they're playing great basketball. Philadelphia 76ers are on one. That's going to be a heated game. Like, the schedule doesn't get appreciably easier anytime soon. Uh, down the stretch, they've got, they've got a little window. But they need to start picking up some of these games. And Kevin Durant, this is the challenge. And I believe this is what brought him to Brooklyn in the first place. He knew that at Golden State, no matter what he did, demonstrated after winning two championships and being the finals MVP, that he was never going to be the centerpiece. It was never going to be his team. He was never going to get credit for whatever they were able to accomplish, not the credit that he deserved based on what he was contributing. So he goes to Brooklyn. Well, KD, this is now your opportunity. And so there's no, like, we played it close and we're making the best of a bad or difficult situation. He needs to come through somehow, some way. The opportunity was there last night, and, and he fell short. And that can't continue. So uh, w w however high that expectation might be, considering he's just coming back from injury, the reality is if the Nets are still going to salvage this season he's going to have to clear that bar in order for that to happen. Yeah, Rick, I, I agree with a lot of what you're saying, but I think they, the Nets fans and the organization have reason to be encouraged because of what they saw. Like, let's not act like he didn't just come off of an MCL sprain and previously uh, an Achilles. Like, this is a guy who's been riddled by injury, and every time he stepped back on the hardwood, it's like, what injury? Was he even how long? How long has he been healthy? Because it looked like he could have played like the way he performed last night. Looked like he's been ready to go. So for me, you have to be encouraged by that. Because <laughs> to paraphrase, there is a Kyrie coming through the door. There is against Boston. Their next game, it's on the road. You will have him paired with Kyrie. You will have these pieces. You have Ben Simmons coming through the door. When we don't know, but you know he's coming through the door. And so with that. You all you want is a chance. And that is what Kevin Durant provides you. A chance. With him off when him off of the court, no chance. I don't care who you got out there, you don't have a chance. But with him on the court, even by him, his lonesome self, you have a chance. And I get it. The Heat were without Jimmy Butler and Kyle Lowry and some other guys, some important factors. But they still had a chance. Why? Because Kevin Durant was present coming off an MCL sprain and to put up the numbers that he put up, to play the minutes that he played, he looked great. Mm. And so for me, if I'm watching that game, which I've watched that game, and I'm a fan, I'm excited. Yeah. Because if he looks like this by himself, day one after coming off of this MCL sprain, after not playing over a month of basketball, shoot, yeah. I, I'm excited about that. I I'm think it was definitely closer to that. more excited about... Yeah. I'm definitely more excited about what, what's to come with with KD and the Brooklyn Nets, then what's to come with AD and the Los Angeles Lakers? <laughs> I'm with Greg. Uh, you, you can only have this answer as encouraged, right? He misses about six weeks. They crater without him, 5-16. and 16. The guy comes back, 35 minutes, 31 points, has his team in position <laughs> to win. Like, come on. Uh, Kevin Durant was uh, – the guy's incredible. I think if you want to be discouraged by anything, it's – a, this Joe Harris news. Uh, this is a guy, I know some people are going to scoff, oh, Joe Harris, you know, shooter. The guy led the NBA two of the last three years in three-point percentage, okay? He's now officially done for the year with ankle surgery. That's number one. And number two, and I'm sorry, I know people are going to say, Jay, you're a, a Kevin Durant fan and you've been defending him for years. 
But Kyrie Irving is the real story here, okay? I know we can wait for Ben Simmons. I'll sit around and wait for that guy. I, I really think if Kevin Durant's season does not go as planned, a.k.a. they don't get to the finals, this has fallen on Kyrie Irving, and Kevin Durant should be absolutely livid with him. He left Golden State, followed Kyrie, Kyrie Irving, okay? Of all players, you got to follow Kyrie Irving, the guy who bailed on LeBron, who bailed, bailed, bailed on Brad Stevens in Boston. You follow Kyrie to Brooklyn. Then you get hit with this pandemic, and the only reason the Nets have absolutely cratered from second in the East to eighth or seventh or whatever they are, it's because Kyrie Irving didn't get the vaccine. And if you really want to win, you get the damn vaccine. And then you go out and you're playing every night. And now, you know, you got to settle for what Greg was just saying. Hey, they get Kyrie back for the next game. He's going to suit up because they're on the road. I know the rules stink, the, the mandate stuff. It's, it, at this point, it's silly in New York. Like, come on, guys, fix that. But Kyrie Irving is the reason this team is not a top four seed in the East right now. His, him not getting the vaccine is the primary problem here. And Kevin Durant should not be upset with Ben Simmons or any of this James Harden stuff. Kyrie Irving is the guy who needs to figure it the hell out because this Nets team is absolutely deadly. And Rick, I still think they got a good shot at the finals. But if you're playing Kyrie like every other game in the playoffs or whatever, this two at home and two away, and like, I, I, I don't know if I like their chances, man. All right, so uh, we were just talking about accountability with the Lakers and LeBron James. I'm beginning to understand, J. Mac, why you're always defending LeBron James. Because accountability doesn't seem to be something that you're big on. Kevin Durant <laughs> decides to follow Collar. You see, it was your words. Yeah. He decides <laughs> to follow Kyrie Irving to Brooklyn. And that's Kyrie Irving's fault. That's not Kevin Durant's fault for making that decision. That's Kyrie Irving's fault because Kevin Durant decided, like Kyrie should have said, no, dude, dude, I'm unreliable. Like, I, I, like you never know what I'm going to do. I'm a little bit crazy. KD, you might want to think twice about coming and joining me in Brooklyn. Like, how is that not, like, I'm, I'm, <laughs> there are plenty of issues. I have plenty of issues with what Kyrie Irving does and says. But the fact that Kevin Durant decided to follow him to Brooklyn is not yeah. one of them. And when it comes to whether this team is going to win or lose, look, let's face it, where they are right now is because of James Harden more cool. than anything else. James Harden deciding to dip. Don't you think that if James Harden was in uniform and was still enthused about playing for the Brooklyn Nets and believing in where they want to go, that they wouldn't have won last well, night's why game? Why did Harden they certainly dip, certainly would have had a much better chance. Didn't he What's dip that? because of Kyrie Irving? Remember the stories? He couldn't deal with Kyrie Honestly, Irving's crazy. I don't, honest, uh, again, again, Kevin Durant talks to James Harden. James Harden can't get to Philadelphia if that's the place that he wanted and says, you know what, I, I'm willing to go to Brooklyn. Let me, let's do it. You could pay, you know, King's ransom for me. Let's go do this. Uh, by all accounts, he was enthusiastic when he got there. So... Kyrie Irving wasn't a surprise to James Harden. Certainly shouldn't have been. And I'm sorry. Okay, so the dude's a little quirky. He's burning sage in the locker room. Really? Uh, Greg Jennings, tell me how many quirky teammates that you had. How many guys who did stuff where you went, what the hell's that about? And did it make you decide, you know what, I don't want to play here? Like, I'm, no! But, Greg, how many of them like, were major stars? <laughs> I don't want to hear about, like, the third-string long snapper. I want to hear about, like, the equivalent what, what, of a point do, guard doing do you, that. J-Mac, 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 what did Aaron Rodgers just do? What, what's the cleanse that he just did? Yeah. Like, are you telling me that's not a little quirky? Are, that's not a little strange? You wouldn't go, what the hell's that about? Are they like, getting free agent wide receivers to come join? I, I don't know that they are, Rick. I mean, look. The, the fact of the matter is, is you have Kevin Durant. You have one of the best players. Some would argue the best player in the world when healthy. You're expected to win. With him on the court, you're expected to win. Yes, he made the decision to join Kyrie, but he left a guaranteed situation. Why did he leave that situation? And it's, he, he made the comments of, I'm not the savior. Well, Kevin Durant news flash sometimes it's not what you believe to be it's what everybody expects you to be and the expectation coming into brooklyn with kevin durant being paired with kyrie irving was oh we got it save us we've never won here's our opportunity because we have the best in the, on the planet doing it and so with that with with there's there's a scripture in the bible that says to whom much is given much is required look man it's required of you now. 
Like you're on a team that you understand, you understood going into this season. Okay, Kyrie is on turbulent ground all the time. And so it's never going to be smooth. It's going to be up and down, wavy, and inconsistent. With James Harden, you had a guy who didn't really want to be there. So you you know this. You see that. You feel the vibe of the locker room. And instead of running away from it and saying, I'm not the savior, you have to embrace that. You have to say, yeah, you know what? I'm going to hold us together. Until we get all together, with, with, and that now being with Ben Simmons and Kyrie and whatever the mandate's going to be moving forward. You have to right the ship. That is the requirement. That is the expectation of every Net fan. Yeah, you can say, well, it's not all on KD. Well, the fact of the matter it is, is it is on mm. all on KD that, because that's all they got right now. And that's what makes it tricky. Y yes, Rick, I, I bashed Kevin Durant when he left Curry, who's one of the most stable, smart players in the league, for Kyrie Irving, who is over there. Um, but I, I, I just, it, this is what makes it tricky, Greg. You know, Kyrie Irving is the alpha who got Kevin Durant to Brooklyn, right? Because he is, Kyrie Irving is cool, right? He sells sneakers. He does a movie. Players like him. His handle is nice. His, his uh, finishing package at the rim is elite. Like, the internet loves Kyrie Irving. Uh, I don't know why, but they just love his highlights, okay? But on the court, we would agree Kevin Durant is the savior, right, Rick? He is the alpha. He is the best player. He is who the offense should go through. So that's what makes this a little bit of a tricky thing. And for whatever reason, and I, I like Kevin Durant. We've exchanged plenty of DMs on Instagram. I, he seems like a good dude. I don't totally understand how this is going to work in the playoffs. Uh, and I, I, I know people will not like to hear whose team is it. But when the chips are down, games five, six, and seven, yeah. fourth quarter, is it Kyrie's show or is it KD's show? Who is the offense running through? Who's the guy in the huddle saying, man up, play defense? Who's barking? Because... I don't totally know the answer. And, Rick, I think we've seen enough sports. You've covered the league for over 25 years. You need to have that guy. We could say it's his turn, my turn, sure. but you need that guy. And I, I think it's KD, but I'm not so sure Kyrie's cool with that. No, it's got, it has to be KD because he is the best player on this team without question. But, I, I, look, KD's reluctance to use the word savior or to be uh, labeled the savior of this team. There's two ways to look at it. One is that he doesn't want the pressure or the responsibility of, of being the guy who's supposed to pull this team out of the doldrums. The other is that he doesn't like what, the, what, what calling himself a savior says about his teammates and his team as if they need saving, as if they can't get the job done and I'm the one who needs to, to, to do it, that they're not good enough to get it done. And I believe knowing KD a little bit and some of the other ways that he talked about uh, his responsibility here, that it's the latter. He simply didn't want to look at it as yeah, this team sucks unless I, I, I actually get it done. They're not capable of it. I believe that's what he was ultimately saying. When it comes to, again, I'm going to go back to it. Because uh, for a second there, Greg, when you were talking about you can't, you can't run away from the responsibility, I thought you were talking about James Harden. Because James Harden basically ran away from the responsibility of trying to help this team get to where it was going to go or where they hoped it would go. And now he's in Philadelphia having a great time. But Ben Simmons is not available for the Brooklyn Nets. And they had to make the best of a bad situation. Once, once a James Harden, a player of that caliber, says, I'm going to go to the old hamstring injury route and I'm just going to shut it down until I'm out of here, I, you're really forcing a team's hand. There's not a whole lot that they can do but try to make the best of a, of a bad situation. And what you saw last night is how vital Ben Simmons is to this equation. Andre Drummond, four rebounds in 20 minutes. LaMarcus Aldridge, four rebounds in 24 minutes. Ben Simmons can do a lot defensively uh, and on the boards for this Nets team, and they desperately need that. But I'm going to go back. I, it sounds like, Greg, that I convinced <coughs> you that uh, Nets fans should not be encouraged. They should be discouraged because KD needs to, like, he needs to deliver. No questions asked. Needs not just get 31, not, not just do the LeBron James number, but like winning numbers. Do whatever is necessary in order to get the W's. 
And for as good as he looked, for as amazing as he looked coming back from injury, he wasn't able to get that done. And there are, as I said, there are no moral victories at this point. They just need, they need real ones. So I'll clarify. I'm, I'm still standing my ground on the, the Nets fans being encouraged. But when it comes to Kevin Durant and him saying that I'm not the savior, I agree with you. I think that all of what you said, the latter of him not wanting to make it seem that his teammates can't get it done, that they don't have a good enough roster in the personnel, I truly believe that to be the case. However, when you are expected, and this is, again, I go right back to why you even went after Kevin Durant in free agency. Everyone knew why. Every, the expectation was set. So you don't need to say it. I just need you to do it. I just need you to deliver it. Mm. I know. I, I know you're a team guy. I know you. I know you want to say and do all the right things. You don't want to throw Kyrie under the bus. You don't want to throw James Harden under the bus. But you know what's going on. And so, it, w with knowing that, and you're the only one that is pretty stable, given injury, barring any injury, I, you're all I got. And as a Nets fan. They're looking at, if you look at the Nets roster, they're not looking at Kyrie and saying, okay, let's go, Kyrie. We need you. No, they're looking at KD. Yeah. Like, KD, man, mm -hmm. when is he coming back? We need him. Even if Kyrie can't play in home games, you still, if it, if the, if it was reversed and you didn't have KD in home games, but you had Kyrie consistently all the time, you think the Nets fans would be as excited? <laughs> no, they would be concerned. Because KD is not present yeah. all the time. Yeah. That is the deal. So it, it, regardless of or despite how you may believe yourself, I need your actions to say something otherwise. And, and when you think about the great players, they just step up to the plate. And I believe that that's what KD is going to do. That's why the, the fan and organization is going to be encouraged. Yeah. Greg, my favorite part was where Rick said, KD, do whatever it takes to get the win. The only person not doing that is Kyrie Irving. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.